Hi Dixons, I'm Luke Sparks, speaking to you today from Dixons Unity in their Unity community space, where the team are doing such inspirational work that grew out of the very sense of togetherness that underpins our mission at Dixons. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. We are working towards a nine day fortnight for our teachers and innovating on working models for our associate staff. 40,000 teachers resigned from state schools last year in 2023, which is almost 9% of the teaching workforce and the highest number since these figures began being published in 2011. Beyond this, large numbers of teachers were missing because of illness, with more than 3 million working days of sick leave taken last year, a rise of more than 50% compared with pre-pandemic levels in 2018 and 19. Teaching is the hardest it has ever been, with tight budgets and complexities in our communities post-pandemic. And beyond this, for those communities, though many public services are universal, school is the only public service that sees children and families every single day. It's essential that we have a well-skilled, well-looked-after workforce to take on this challenge, important for our teachers and important for our society. We also know that flexible working has a strong positive impact on equality, diversity and inclusion. A way of life that we're working on actively at Dixon's to ensure our culture is one where everyone can belong. Employees with a disability or long-term health condition are significantly more likely to say they have left the job in the last year or changed their career profession due to a lack of flexible working. So what are we doing? We are working through the practicalities right now. We're in the process of modeling out flexibility within our academies. We are working through key questions around ensuring continuity for our students, fairness for our colleagues and cost effectiveness. Throughout this work, our absolute focus is always on securing the best outcomes for the young people we serve. Let's take a step back for a moment. We have a long relationship with flexibility and workload at Dixon's. This is rooted in our commitment to self-determination and tethered to our mission. If we are to challenge educational and social disadvantage in the North, we are obligated to see and be and do things differently. We scrutinize our asks with a benchmark of high impact. The orthodoxy of old leadership behaviors is routinely challenged. How many of us as school leaders sat, perhaps early in our careers, in book scrutinies, or spent whole Sundays writing repeated level descriptors into children's books, or photocopying minimally different worksheets onto varying pastel backgrounds. That strange earlier career point of not understanding why you are doing something, assuming it is because of your inexperience, and then ultimately learning it was because no one knew. We just all did it, so there was a fear in the not doing of it. But Dixon's is a disruptor and we don't buy into the idea of the upstart. We value and make room for constructive challenge and the calling out. We operate on a model called aligned autonomy. You can find out more about aligned autonomy by watching our open source video on the Dixon's OS platform. The link is in the notes below. Let me walk you through some examples. We have a central curriculum. We don't deliver it in a box and drive school to school, checking everyone is on page 25 along the Leeds Liverpool Canal. It's just there to be used or not, to move the workload and energy from generation to adaptation, refinement and place. We have structures designed at source for sharing and leaning on each other's brilliance. This way, our team is far more than the sum of its parts. Resources are shared openly and determinedly our cross-cutting teams meet routinely across the academic year for the explicit purpose of sharing. We only assess twice a year and all we ask for is a raw number. Only one of these is data collected centrally and the assessment is produced by the cross-cutting team for everyone to use. The minimal commonality that is needed to make these skeleton central processes function is iterated in our backbone. If it isn't on there, then there is autonomy. We all know that the real incinerator of energy in education is behaviour management. Here, we work hard. We have highly consistent behaviour management approaches across our trust that build supportive mechanisms around children and adults. 
We support our students to prevent behaviour slipping into the sanctioned space, but wherever this is necessary, it is purposeful and centralised. We want our staff to think about building relationships and students learning on the purposeful and the productive. Similarly, we monitor learning in classroom, in books, on the pitch. We are attentive to student outcomes. This is so different to marking. This is sincerely engaging in assessment and it produces feedback that is often deliverable live or through reflection at scale, whole class, or as part of an adaptations to planning or indeed to the curriculum map. And we get so much time back to do this really well by limiting our meetings. We ask and expect to hear feedback on how we can shave this even closer. Colleagues at Dixon's will tell us if we waste even a moment of their time and they know they will be listened to. But let's look to the future. We want to go further. We need to go further. As those statistics I shared show, for many of us, the pandemic has changed our relationship with work and with wellness. We know that education is a hard landscape and we work and live best when we are nourished and replenished. We are working towards a nine day fortnight for teachers without impacting students' contact time. As far as possible, we want this to be a genuine reduction in working hours and not simply a move to compress 10 days of teaching into nine. And the analysis we have been conducting shows this is possible in many of our schools. Our hard data is telling us we can have softer lives. Where this model may not work, we are pushing forward with a plan that allows remote working during non-contact time, which includes giving more PPA and making it manageable from home or another remote location. And where our teachers want to do this, compressing the free hours or non-contact hours so that they can be away from school for longer periods of time. Another strand of our flexible working plan is to offer personal days during term time. Although the holiday allowance afforded to teachers is generous, we know that is also restrictive and we believe that allowing some deviation is not just welcome but necessary. 71% of workers view a flexible working pattern as important to them when considering a new role, while 69% say the ability to work remotely is important. Imagine the potential and capacity we can unlock for education if we can help our colleagues to be more effective at work and attract more talented, passionate teachers to the profession. If flexible working is the norm for a huge number of careers in 2024 and is set to be a deciding factor for people's career choices, let's keep education at the forefront of that movement. Like other school trusts, we are looking at how artificial intelligence, AI, can be used to alleviate workload pressures from automating the summarization of meetings and distribution of actions to the generation of lesson resources and plans. Our AI cross-cutting team, which has representation from each of our 17 academies, is leading our thinking on this. But we want to be bolder. We believe AI could form a reimagining of the school timetable to reduce teachers' contact time and provide greater flexibility. We appreciate that this approach will need tailoring around subject-specific needs. A one-size-fits-all model will not work in this context. But we are looking at how AI and technology more widely can support our staff by freeing up more time and also by allowing our best teachers to influence more students than those physically present in their classrooms. It's important to clarify that harnessing the power of emerging technologies is not about reducing our current workforce. Rather, it's a strategic response to the pressing recruitment challenges facing our schools. We will be working with Ambition Institute to make our flexible working plans a reality through piloting approaches that draw inspiration from Next Education Workforce, an initiative which focuses on workforce design by reimagining the typical classroom and supporting teachers to have greater influence without giving more time. We are excited to share more on this in the future. Flexibility in the workplace is vital to securing more teachers. In line with our deep commitment to self-determination, supporting greater flexibility with these initiatives gives our teachers more agency over their roles and greater satisfaction by prioritising work-life harmony. Thanks for watching. 
and I look forward to sharing more with you soon. Don't forget to sign up to our platform and reach out to the open source team to talk through any of the ideas you've heard about today. Contact details are in the notes below. See you soon.